Lots of fire coming down and German air support to strafe the infantry. Incendiary going off in the back. They're just launching all the fire they have to burn the allies out of this position. Hey guys, before the main video starts, if you want to support the channel, again, like, subscribe, or become a channel member. Every little bit helps, and I greatly appreciate everyone who watches this video. Enjoy. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot170, bringing you another Company Heroes 3 replay. This is a 4v4 on the awesome Grayshot Productions Contest, sponsored... No, 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 it's part of the Mapmaker Contest I, I did, but Spring Air put together. So happy, finally, to cover this. But, uh, we have a number of key combatants here in this game. And uh, let's go to the Allies right now. Two Americans, two Brits by Johnny, Nearly Sam, Pata, and Screaming Steel versus Dank Boy, uh, Rosen, uh, Kren Krow? Uh, we got, I'll say Rosen. We got Dolph Stallone and Borat. Uh, three Vermok and a Doc player, which I'm assuming it did not go with the new uh, battle group, but the British did. The British have Australian defense. Uh, let's see, Nearly Sam has got Advanced Infantry. We got Pada going Air and Sea, and we got Screaming Steel going Special Operations. If you want to show off the new battle group and you have it, please submit it to my GMR Discord down below, and I will check it out. Uh, we got ourselves, like I said, a number of forces moving around this map. For those who don't know or are unaware, this map is pretty much has a tight mid center with more open left and right for big flanks with plenty of cover if you need it. Uh, there's good terrain, all sorts of locations, so you're not just out in the open. You do have some good cover to jump to from place to place to place. That's why I love this map so much, plus it is beautiful. They did have to cut down a lot of the stuff, but, like, it used to be absolutely gorgeous in this sector for the waterways. Uh, but they did change that up a little bit, but still, I think it still holds a lot of the flair and attention that it does. It's still a beautiful-looking map. Anyway... On the far left, we got ourselves some British forces. Uh, we got ourselves Pada pushing left, about to hit uh, Dank Boy. And again, on the right, we got uh, Falchion Pioneers coming on in. And again, just go over them real quick. Mechanized Battle Group, Dank Boy going Luftwaffe, as we just saw. And we got ourselves Breakthrough. Uh, Borat going the Armored Support. So big Armored Charges potentially. Cash going down very early on for the Axis. But they want that fuel bad. Um, we have the Ket and Krag trying to sneak its way through enemy territory. Again, trying to stealth grab. We know it doesn't have the upgrade because it doesn't have the thing in the back. But it is still a nice play in order to cut off allied fuel. And potentially try to cut them off entirely on a sector. Now, as we can see, this sector would be the cutoff and it's still fine. British forces are pushed back by the MG. Now their Vickers looking the wrong way needs to reposition itself. Uh, let's see. We got ourselves down south, where we got a cat and crab providing a little bit of scout for against the Americans down here. We do have ourselves a weasel with a howitzer coming on in, so not too shabby. Again, bring in the support if you can. Just to put in perspective as to why this is a weasel with an M1, a very good arrangement. So these guys are gonna drive on in with that uh, support equipment, and hopefully be able to drive the enemy back with some good, good artillery. So, he's going to need to pull back, but with it, hopefully the artillery support backed up by multiple MGs, they're able to push the Vermok back, slowly but surely with enough MG fire. But the Allies are the ones being pushed back in the victory point department. They're down about 85 munitions, and Ken Craig tried to cut this off, but a good kill by the British forces in mid. Managed to hold it. We haven't really gone into mid. There's mortar support by the Germans, as we see here. There's one mortar, plenty of MGs, a bunker going down, reinforced with a uh, MG being upgraded into it. So they really want to lock this place down. Again, not too shabby. Let's see, nearly Sam going with purely riflemen and, a you know, a couple. Advanced infantry makes sense, get rangers, and then you get the artillery support. Building goes down thanks to the mortar. Uh, again, there's a guy in a building. Bring it down, whether with AT fire, mortar fire, artillery fire, whatever you have, knock it out with some good stuff. And uh, you can definitely pay off by reducing cover and allowing, the, uh, just killing the enemy um, position inside of it. Again, another bunker is going down. They really are locking this place down. Right hand side is looking pretty bad for Screaming Steel. He's doing the best he can, 
But uh, give a shout out to Rosen, who's still managing to you know put some pressure on him. Again, he doesn't have much of a front, so he's basically on defense for the time being. And Crad is up to veterancy. We have the breakthrough upgrade on the Grenadiers, giving those MP40s, which they decrease the cost of, which I find all interesting because they're already very powerful. Uh, so yeah, let's decrease the cost to make them better. Borat getting into a situation he may not be uh, properly able to deal with. Push on the left, but Australian forces uh, by Johnny are hold or we're holding mid. They had to pull back, but British forces in general with Brens, Brens are fantastic by the way, are pushing in. Problem is, is the bunkers. There's so many bunkers here. They're just gonna open fire. Also, again, one thing about this map, also look at the gorgeous waterways. Look at that. There's some of the terrain, but oh, look at that. Oh, chef's kiss. It looks so good. But the bridges are destructible, which means you can stop uh, maneuverability for a lot of units along these ways. And again, I love how you can easily move up a lot throughout this entire back area, so you're not really choke pointed. It, it's a nice, it's a good balance where it feels like this is a claustrophobic location, but it doesn't feel like you're like choked pointed on this map. It, there's so many ways to get into all these areas. It's so good. Uh, Dingo managed to hold hold back the Falsham Pioneers. We have a, a more Falsham Pioneers dropping on in. The Germans, by the way, bring out double support guns. Uh, again, very good right now. Support guns, top tier in terms of artillery. So again, if you need to bomb the enemy back, this MG sort of situation where it's like, okay, build the bunkers, I'll get the support guns, and I will bomb them into submission. Not gonna say it's weird for a man named Borat to be uh, bombing the uh, uh, British and American forces, but that's the situation we're in. Half track is trying to heal on the right, but I managed that M1 uh, howitzer is doing what it can. We have uh, scout units trying to grab the territory. He got smoked, so he's gonna pull back. So good job on screaming steel on that front. Looks like a flank by uh, the Falsham Pioneers might be able to neutralize Green, who is Pata. Nice uh, satchel. There he goes. Blows up that MG, and the Royal Engineers are running. Uh, British forces are the last remaining with that dingo, which is being hit by artillery fire, of all things. Thank you for the follow, man. Very kind of you. That follow might have just been enough. The British holding firm pushed back the Falsham Pioneers. Dingo did perish, by the way. So unfortunate. Uh, looks like the Pada did lose a number of his men. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold that front for too much longer. Let's see. He is dropping in a commando section to hold that front. So he's calling in last uh, minute reinforcements in order to turn the tide. And that might actually help him prevail and hold the fuel. But he needs to grab the VP as we're seeing with the allies bleed down to 200 uh, victory points the in the meantime. Wow. Okay. Points. You don't see one of these very often. A 2-2-1. Two, two, no upgrades on it. But still, it's uh, causing a little bit of havoc. Has gotten three kills. Not too shabby for it. I also love the skid on it. Really nice. But with the artillery support, uh, by those support guns, they're just bombing the Americans back. It is pretty uh, tough for the Allies to hold this sector. Do we have any beacons down by him? I don't see any beacons. But they can call an artillery support. Uh, so... As we can see. Uh, or I guess we can't see. Give me a second. There we go. Now we can see. Camouflage beacon. It's like, but it's 50 manpower. But he has enough. Resource wise, double check a lot of the guys. Johnny uh, is pretty low. There goes the building. Uh, hold on. We got a lot of fuel by Screaming Steel over here. What is he going for? Are you about to get a building upgrade? Oh, he is. Okay. Mechanized. Oh, he for. Wow, that's a. I Maybe that's just me. That's a late mechanized support upgrade. But whatever. Looks like someone got armor with uh, nearly Sam. Bringing out a Chaffee of all things. Should be able to easily hold back that 221 without question. Medical uh, bunker. Sorry. Medical truck on the right. Hello, chat. Again, thank you for tuning on in. Oh, nice have one counters to the mortars. Looks like double artillery is doing what it needs to in order to drive. Or just hammer out the allied position. So awesome job on that end. Sorry, the axis positions. We can see here he's having to recruit it. But they're still under constant fire. Even the medical truck 
is under fire. So awesome job on that end. Flamethrower units are trying to burn out the Brits. But as we can see here, Johnny is having none of it. His men with Brens are just open fire. Kills a Grenadier on the retreat. And this is going to be an absolute slaughter for the Vermont. He's going to pull on back. Medical truck is here. But again, he's going to be lured into a very defensive position for the Brits. And the engineer is on the verge of death. Grenadiers trying to get in there, trying to kill what they can. Do kill the medical truck with the Panzer Faust. British, hold on. He does kill the Brit forces. And actually, it turns out that Johnny may have not, uh, es uh, not uh, may have overestimated his ability to kill this Grenadier force. But nope. One great howitzer comes on in from a uh, shot from uh, Screaming Steel and neutralized it. Unfortunately, AT Gun did get killed by grenades, but he was able to recruit it. Heavy losses on both sides. While the British are fine, we double check uh, the one gentleman. And he is, uh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. That, that, the wrong guy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's lost a majority of his frontline capability. So, I feel like that right-hand side is just not going to have the force in order to take it back as quickly as he may like. Alright. Uh, we have, uh, Panzer forces. Panther is on the field. Okay. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Oops, sorry, wrong button. There we go. Moving on in. Looking pretty fierce, all things considered. But yeah, he's going to charge on in and just get ready for that fierce counterattack. We'll see how things go. But hopefully he's able to uh, drive the allies back with a good... But he's going to need Axis Frontline Forces. And does he have that? No, he does not. He, uh, a lot of the Axis are really down on Frontline Forces based on uh, taking a lot of losses in combat. So we'll have to see what they plan. Again, a little bit of force, but I don't know. We do know that, again, Screaming Steel has a lot of MGs and... The question would be, is is AT potential? All right, let's double check on that front. Screaming Steel does have double. No, he's got a triple howitzers. Damn, he just wants to bomb the enemy back, but he has no AT, and that's going to be his weakness if that Panther is able to move in. Remember, Panthers in this version of the game, other than Code 2, fantastic at killing infantry. So will be something he has to watch out for. Again, maybe not as good as a Tiger, which we'll get to. That thing has been buffed. But uh, still, pretty damn good. British forces are hiding out on the left. Where is the uh, British forces that I'm thinking of? Uh, okay, so Johnny has gone with uh, Creeping Barrage instead of the Archer. So no Archer this game. Uh, also, strengthen the economy. Great. That it, The caches are so cheap with this. I think it's like 130. Commander, wait it's so cheap. Bazooka teams are holding back the Panther. Uh, let's see, two pounder and the Australian light infantry. But he's not really using much of that. Uh, he's actually not even put caches down. So good team player right there. Really a couple good caches in a couple of good locations like this 10 over here. Uh, let's see, I think the fuel back here for the 10 would be really helpful. Anyway, we got German forces. Thanks to Borat pushing on in to really hit Screaming Steel. They want this area knocked out in order to take back the BP and just annihilate the German, uh, Germans, the, the allied chances of victory. We got the, uh, uh, was it SSF commandos over here by the Americans. Managing to do quite a bit of damage. How is your support? Bombing them. Bet three Ken cred. Pretty nice. Oh my god, yep. Those M1s are no joke. Bombing the axes back. We have air support in mid to stop the, uh, sorry, sorry, tried to suppress the American forces there. Nearly Sam, though, is suppressed, but his rangers continue to move forward with bars. Looks like he got the bar upgrade for them and continue to, uh, upgrade, so nice. Grenades are thrown. Uh, there is a medical, uh, truck here, so he's probably gonna be able to get that up just fine. Lots of British and American forces here. It's, I, I don't expect the Germans are gonna be able to break through. Flamethrower is powerful, but it's weak against enemy fire. And, oh, wow, just a lot of artillery came on in. Almost neutralized that British force. Weasel did go down, looks like, so that's unfortunate. Most likely from AT fire. Another Weasel goes down. Lots of fire coming on in. That's has to be a number worker, right? Is that... Is it Dank Boy? No, it's not the Dankest Boy. It has to be Rosen. Coming in with a ne Neville Warfer. 
No kill so far, but uh, most likely as the upgrade for veteran. See, a la, that's why you're seing it. A historical, no Panthers in uh, dock. Well, too bad. There was also no Soviet forces in Port of Hamburg, but you know. <laughs> We're fine with that in Co. 2. Falsion Pioneers pull back. Commando still holding. This gentleman up here has just been very defensive. And uh, I'm surprised because we looked at Pada and he doesn't have that big of a force. Now he's got a Matilda. But I mean, like, it, we look at Dank Boy. I feel like he should have the firepower to break the Brits. He's just been very defensive in that front. It needs to be more offensive. Luckily, Rangers are locking down mid and holding that pretty uh, steadily. So it looks like the major area of contention is this uh, southern location. And so far, the Allies are holding on to it with everything they have. Counter artillery fire has neutralized the Howitzer, as we can see here. But we double check with Screaming Steel. He still has a number of them left. And they're holding on pretty damn well. 68 kills. Again, all things considered, they're doing just fine. Again, there's one unit here, but it's just not going to deal with everything. So, yeah. The Axes are going to need something. Now, they do have some repair facilities. Thumbs up to that. Good idea. Make sure your troops are automatically repairing. But they're going to need to break through a lot of this stuff. We act, Again, Streaming Steel does not have any sort of... Uh, yeah, they, they don't have any armor still. They don't have actually really have much AT. He's really relying on his anti-infantry firepower to keep the Germans away. But as another Panther rolls on up, I don't know. And again, they both have veterancy to it. Nebwerfer is returning fire. Trying to hit the Howitzers. Does force them back. Small push up in the northern sector. Panther, uh, sorry, Panzer IV trying to kill those commandos. And they will drive back. The British commandos. Now it's up to this. Buddy, move up your Panzer Jaegers and hit the Matilda. Like, there's not much that you can do to suppress it. There's no NGs. You have a couple of Shrek forces. Neutralize the Matilda and just deal that devastating blow against the Allies. Come on. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Alright. And I know I should probably have this up, but I feel like there's just with there's not much screen area if I have both these up, so that's why I kind of limit it for reference. But we can check it now and again to see how things are doing. Again, the Filey's moving on up. Close range Shrek, but does quite a bit of damage even as the Panzer IV bounces off. Again, just keep at range and fire the Shrek teams, and then have the Panzer kill the infantry. Looks like a loiter and some good British uh, assault force managed to break up the Germans along the right. Panthers are repositioning up north. Uh, are they moving all their forces over to just annihilate this poor sucker? So it looks like Pada could be facing the full wrath of the axes here in a minute. Now, good job on the allies. They have stopped the bleed. 85 to 421. A huge difference. But a good job. Uh... Thanks to American determination in mid via the Rangers. And it looks like we have defensive structures. Actually, artillery going in to try to bomb the Axis in this sector or by his base. Whatever the case, good job. Cash went down, by the way, by the Germans. Massive amount of German forces by Borat over here. But no armor, which makes me think, if we could go over to him real quick, that he's going to be upgrading to a Tiger here soon. Yeah, he has 300 manpower. Oh, sorry, fuel. He's getting a tiger. It has to. He has to be. We got ourselves a Grant, by the way, uh, with a serious amount of firepower to try to drive the enemy back. Hell of a shot against that blob. Hits three units for the price of one. Great job. He's going to push on in to that sector. Lighting up the German forces. Helping clear the sector. Excellent job. That being said, double checking on the left, and it is a slaughter right now as the hover goes down th thanks to the massive amount of German armor. The Matilda gets neutralized. The Grant comes up just to see the body. There is a single sorry, there is a single Sherman pushing on left, and that's from nearly Sam. Again, with a 76. We do have air support coming on in. 
hitting the German Panzers, but not doing all that much. It's like, all right, what, what are you going to do? 76 Sherman pushing on in. More airstrikes, but they miss? So nearly Sam. Yeah, he went with Mechanized. So he has the upgrades for the 76 Sherman. Good for him. They did, you know, reduce the overall cost. But overall, the Axis just have way too many forces in this sector, in my personal opinion. What's really interesting is the right, which as you can see here, Johnny uh, managing to push on in and actually neutralize a lot of the forces right there. We got his own uh, air support moving on in. If I can just quickly reduce this. It's more of an anti-infantry strafe. Well, I'm sorry, it's not his airstrike, it's Screamy Steel's airstrike, but it's anti-infantry. That helps against all this. And again, the Grants will continue to cause absolute chaos. The infantry just being annihilated. Good counterattacks across the board. One Panzer three, moving on in, but the Grants are just dominating in this fight. Again, just to put perspective, this Grant has 11 kills uh, with, well, okay. Another nine here, so not too shabby, all things considered. Potentially a whiz bang will make its debut. Again, just shocking. There's no armor for Screaming Steel. But he's managed to, they've managed to push back the Axis this far. Brumbar needs heals. A lot of the defensive works over here got neutralized. It's looking bad on the right, which is where the Axis really try to counter, uh, but still just no dice. Now, Axes are down but they're not out they still have 38 munitions 28 fuel so really they still have a lot of these key areas right now which is helping them stay in the game with the resource department population wise we do a quick check we're at 72 71 100 and uh 45 so low 70s across the board for the axis allies are looking at 75 uh let's see 90 34 makes things a little bit more complicated as the massive assault begins. Yeah, this was a really forward-facing howitzer. But good artillery strike neutralized a lot of the infantry back there. Great hits. Hell yeah. Armor, uh, multiple Panthers moving on in. But there are Rangers and, uh, fighting with bazookas and AT forces. Let's reduce that bit. Just so much armor moving on in. Lots of bazooka teams, though, hitting the Panthers multiple directions. Panzer IV is moving on in. Just a massive armored force in mid. Absolutely trying to counterattack the Allies and trying to gain a foothold somewhere. We do have armor pushing on in. Bridges half destroyed. One of uh, the Shermans died. Air support helping to kill the second one. So, yeah, there goes a lot of... Uh, Nearly Sam's counter force. Panzer three moving into mid. There are some allied forces still pushing in. British and uh, American forces. But that is a weaker Sherman overall. Air support helping to just continue to strafe it. This one pulled back. One Panther goes down. Second one is barely alive. What happened to the third one? Is the third one dead? Yeah, third one. Uh, sorry, the second one died. So the third one's... The only one remaining. So the big Axis counterattack in mid just kind of fell to the wayside. Not saying they didn't do a lot of damage uh, to the Allies, but if we double check those losses again. Uh, we're looking at like mid 50s, probably mid 70s, uh, Rosen. Yeah, probably low 60s. So the Axis did lose quite a bit. Allies doing a quick check 70s, uh, probably mid 40s. Uh,. Probably like at best if I'm thinking like quick math like upper 50s, but yeah still not the best spot for either side to be in Panther getting some quick heals in we still have the Panzer force that did survive to fight another day So they at least pulled out Again still have a decent amount of infantry, so not too shabby 300 points remaining for the Germans. Grenadiers moving on in Get a nice Faust on that weasel. No cap for you. All right. But we got additional armor with Hellcat being deployed. Uh, we got, oh, a 17 pounder moving up north. But again, he has a very small force. I don't expect uh, Pada to really gain much ground up here. 
really the fight's in mid. And more Panzer threes being deployed. So it looks like Bora said, fuck the Tiger. I'm going with Panzer threes. Which, okay. I mean, who has the Tiger then? Is it Rosen? Uh, I mean, he could be saving up for it. He's probably saving up for one. All right. But his Brumbars will have to make do in the meantime. Again, they can take a lot of punishment. Ally Silva, decent grant force, lying in wait. They have a lot of attack, plus the uh, you add in the six pounder. And the fighting ensues. Massive armor battle, multiple grants trying to hold the line. Brumbar taking a lot of hits, but here come the Panthers and the Panzers with artillery hitting their own men. Nice artillery reduces the Panzer III by quite a bit. Grant goes down. I'm oh, sorry. German armor losing it quite a bit in the back. Grants, uh, they're down quite considerably. 70, uh, sorry, six pounders in the back. It's being hit by German air. Panzer fours managing to push the enemy back. Panzer Jaeger squad, or sorry, or just Jaeger squad, sorry. Managing to hold on to mid. They're moving uh, additional infantry on. It looks like the Germans might actually take mid, which could put the allies in a very bad state. Good suppression run right there. Allied air support coming on in. Crossing the bridge, Hellcat trying to move over to kill that Panzer IV. Again, retreat your squads, it's so low. Oh, good hits with the Creeping Barrage. And again, the other air support, by the way, that has been called in, or maybe it's not air support, but yeah. Let's see, Air and C is that anti-tank loiter, which has been quite effective. Uh, let's see, Screaming Steel is called in his P-47, and Nearly Sam is called in his 155, which is that rapid artillery strike that's been killing stuff in the back. Hellcat got pushed back. AT gun moving on in, since there's really not much there to stop it, infantry-wise. He's just going to quickly cap to stop the bleed, which is quite considerate, uh, sorry, quite considerable on the allied position. We have some additional support, this incendiary bombing run coming on in. Plus, you got the number orphers itself. Stopping the bleed. Nearly Sam, not getting that many kills overall. But he's trying his best to help. Right now, Screaming Steel on the right. Again, I... Finally getting out Shermans, but it, with 76s, so he, again, he has that upgrade. But it took him a long time before I actually get armor. His M1s are the things that have really been pushing the enemy back. Just to put in perspective, 20 kills on that one. Wait, 20 kills on this one. 40 kills at the very least with those M1s. So the the pack guns have been pretty solid, all things considered. Uh, all things considered. Panther trying to kill the bridge, which would limit the away the allies could come in. So not bad. We got some uh, rearm retrofit coming in for Screaming Steel to help him make his tanks even better. We got a flak 30 trying to kill the infantry, but there's so much infantry coming on in, it's probably gonna die. Or at the very least, push back. Support guns, triple support guns. It's like, guys, we have a plan. The plan is lots of uh, fire from our support guns. The enemy won't be able to deal with that. <laughs> they just can't. So we'll do our absolute best to camouflage ourselves and just, uh, you know, hamper the enemy, if at all possible. But allied forces have come back swinging. Lots of men in mid to, to try to hold the, the position. At 250 points. Black 30 repositioning. British infantry moving in. By the way, gotta give, give a shout out to those men. Uh, 21 kills and eight. Uh, not the best, but not nearly the worst. Here come the allies once again. They might be cut off, but. They're not, they're sending in everything they got for a battle for mid. Which again, brings in mid sort of like intensity. Lots of fire coming down and German air support to strafe the infantry. Incendiary going off in the back. They're just, 
launching all the fire they have to burn the allies out of this position and with the loiter coming in to hit the armor panzer IV making uh make, coming back up three panzers are on the field by the way and we have a Black in the back, oh, just trying to, well, first off, it needs heals, but secondly, it stopped any British force from really pushing on in, or really allied force in general. Uh, this AT got in the back, uh, interesting position, but hey, it did kill that 2-2-1, I guess. Should've been pulling on back. Does get straight to neutralize. Unfortunate. Fire coming down on it. Johnny trying desperately to save that 17 pounder. It looks like he will. A lot of the howitzers moved on over. Surprised we have not seen the nub war for target it or just try to neutralize. But after all those airstrikes, did the axes actually manage to take a mid back? And they will. False makers will drop onto the point in a desperate effort to hold on to it. We do have an anti infantry strafe coming on in, but will they stop? They will at least decap it. Armor moves back up with the Shermans. Artillery with the 155 comes on on in. I think, is that the 155 or the Creeping Barrage? Creeping Barrage, okay. Suffice to say, mid is a cluster, and the Axes have been brought down about 200 points. But on the left, could be the Axis making a money move right now as they completely neutralize, well, what's left of Pada's forces. Panthers and Panzers moving through the desert terrain to kill the commandos, the engineers, etc. Again, right now, every little bit helps, and taking these key territories could absolutely turn the tide in the Axis' favor. Resource wise, it could propel them to actually get that lead, because the Allies still have that lead right now. But taking back that, among other things, uh, Panther moving on in. Again, how, much, how many kills does that Flak have, by the way? Flak has no kills, but has a lot of veteran seat, sure. Seventeen pounders still there. Gonna hit that panther, which is, uh, well, was uh, stunned a little bit. Again, they need the infantry to come on in and just grab a lot of territory, because this side has not much. They could quickly, you know, move some infantry and take it out if the man had infantry that could do that. But so far, no, he does not want to commit. Well, who is committing? Is a small raid by Screaming Steel with his own commandos again, SSF commandos. Moving on in to neutralize the Nebelwerfers. Four of them! There are four Nebelwerfers! And yeah, he will move on in to the best of his ability. Switching over to his bazooka teams against Panzers, but he realizes he's too weak. Will run away. Panzers are trying to get the kills. And they will get some shots off. So good job on his part. They'll move back over to the left hand side. British are doing the best they can. I'm assuming in the meantime these guys are getting all the upgrades, right? They have to. Like, he has to be getting the upgrades. They have 200 points uh, he's got an armor and infantry. Let's see, for the Americans. We only have the 76 upgrade uh, for this American force. I, again. I hate the fact that I have to click on every single one of them to switch on over. Okay, so at least Screaming Steel has gotten everything he can, which will definitely help the, make the armor even better. Meanwhile, massive armored force. Three Panthers, two Panzer Force. Stuka now on the field opening fire. Again, Stuka has been buffed a little bit to make sure its barrages are quite a bit faster. Fortunately, oh, it does hit the Royal Engineer, not, but not too much. 17 pounder is set up, so if the armor moves on in, it'll take a beating. So the Nebelwerfers need to come on in and just clear that area. Germans, though, again, what is the infantry? This man just has Nebelwerfers. Rosen just has Nebelwerfers, that's it. Uh, Dolph has four Panthers. Again, lots of support. Not a lot of, not a lot of um, what's it called, uh, infantry. Nebelwerfers are doing what they can. They hurt the Hellcats. They're hurting armor. Just absolute chaos coming in this center, in this area. So, oh wait, here comes the Panthers sneaking through the back lines. And again, Dolph has mechanized assault. So, well, he could, he doesn't have the resource activated. Does kill the armor here. 
again, luckily all the fire and everything missed the 17 pounder right here, which might be an issue for these Panthers. Luckily 17 pounder needs to turn. Air support coming on in. Both allied and Axis air support. Kill the armor, but here come the bazooka teams to kill the Panther. One Panther is down. They're trying to kill all this. Again, why the Nebworfers didn't target this? Now all the grants are in the Panthers in the rear. When another Panther goes down, air support kills a Sherman, but another Panther goes down. Massive amount of, of armor lost right there for the Germans. Does not have enough to get it back very easily. And honestly, not that much for the Allies were lost. Again, I feel like the Nebworfers need to target that sector. If that would have been the case, it might have been a more even fight. Germans didn't even capture this in the meantime. One Panzer IV went down. The second one is holding the line the best of his ability. Dank Boy does not have the firepower to hold this. Where was the Axis AT guns to move on up and cover mid? Our infantry just gets gunned down in the meantime. And again, on the left-hand side, you still have a small detachment by Pada holding the line. We're not seeing Dank Boy really move up with that much. He's been very defensive in this front. The same thing on the right. Uh, we're not seeing Rosen really move on in. He's just gotten one. Yeah, look at... What the fuck am I looking at? What is this? Like, what is this? This is an absolute nightmare of a, of a force if the artillery were to hit. In the meantime, we're seeing the Grant just fire pop shots at it. But this is six Neverwerfers. Yes, I know what it is, uh, chat. But, like... That's a lot of artillery. And again, like, just to put in perspective, just to switch on over. I can I hate the fact I have to switch on over for doing that. Uh, just make me click and make me switch that army, right? So if I double click on this, I should switch that base. But no, it's all on Rosen. Uh, anyway. So, uh, this man has so many Neville Warfers. It's ridiculous. Veterancy will help, I'm not going to lie. Giving them all that one immediately absolutely will help them in their combat potential, right? Because if you click on one of these and just go to bet one, improves accuracy, reduces barrage recharge. That's nice. That's really fucking nice. But one good allied artillery strike, and that's all it needs uh, to hopefully neutralize that stuff. Panther is now back on the front. So Dolph trying to get it, trying to, uh, you know, bring out his armor. But I feel like the allies, unless the Neville Warfers hit perfectly are in a pretty damn good situation right it seems like the axis are the ones that are down on resources the and down on population ready. not a great situation to be in allied artillery bombing that with another flak coming in again with immediate veterancy thanks to the upgrades back at base uh, again, howitzers opening fire, so we have a little bit of allied artillery trying to bomb the axes back as consistently as they can. Plus, again, you still have all those M1s. Oh, finally! Finally, we're using that word for us to target the M1s. Will they even hit, is the question. They're hitting, e they're hitting everywhere around it, but they're not hitting the center location. Grant takes a number one for to the face. Another wave coming on in. Still no direct hits. They're just hitting around it. Like, okay, finally. It looks like we got some hits. There we go. Finally, all three M1s are down. 17 pounders still causing absolute chaos in mid. Panzer IV, in its sight, gets neutralized by it. Air support trying to hit the Grants, but no dice. Grants are going to pull back. You can see all the planes just in the distance. Uh, Whizbang being hit by the air support. Trying to... Uh, successfully pushing back the German armor. So good job on his part. Being strafe though. He's very close to death. Will go down. Thanks to the German Stukas. So great job there. And yeah. Uh, looks like the Allies will hold on to mid. Even with all the Stukas, all the Axis air support, they just can't take mid. Axis just too, uh, too weak at this point. 
How many kills does that 17-pounder have, by the way? Uh, don't know. Unfortunately, it, uh, needs to reposition. We have a Panzer III flame tank. Buddy, I don't know what that's gonna do against 17-pounder, but, you know. Maybe you get some infantry kills on the left and right. More armor moving on in. Or, sorry, whiz bag moving on in. Armor being healed. Uh, truck. AA. <laughs> Shimmy Seal's like, fuck those planes. We're getting AA guns. <laughs> German armor. A shell of its former self is trying to make moves, but the ally is still holding firm. It's really those Nebelwerfers. It's that spam of Nebelwerfers that uh, Rosen is using. Which, he's getting more, by the way. More. I, f I feel like j that like stupid meme where it's like more. <laughs> it's just just more. J look at this. Just get more and more of them. Luckily, uh, 70 pounder is not been neutralized. Six vehicle kills. That's pretty damn good for a uh, for a 17 pounder to have that. Okay, he's hiding behind the building. Again, it's funny how they keep launching all the Nebelwerfers, but for the most part, I'll double check the kills. We'll verify that. But, like, the Allied infantry is not here. They've switched to pure armor. And that seems to be working out. Grant's moving on in. Panther just being overwhelmed by artillery by the Whispering as well. It's like, I am not cut out for this shit. And put and retreats from mid. Grant's gunning him down. Artillery, not again, with the 155 coming in clutch, neutralizing those support guns, annihilating them. Allies, once again, retain the initiative. Here's the thing, Black 36, though, could absolutely pulverize this stuff. Back to nothing to sneeze at. Pack gun providing recon. He's going to keep shooting and being uh, hit. Grant's trying to get out of there. Flak 36 opening fire. Gets a kill. Panzer 3 moving on up and again. I think it's the flame one. No, it's command one. Okay. Support gun looks like one of them, uh, two of them escaped. <laughs> a gun's trying to hit uh, the planes. Allied planes strafing the infantry in the back. Not too shabby. Oh, sorry. And armor. There, there's an anti infantry and armor one. Here comes the Nebelwerfers again, hitting all this, but the infantry just walked around. Oh, never mind. They're going to retreat into... Oof. Oof. Fire hits them on the way out. Does kill one squad. So, hey, they got one squad with all that fire. More fire coming down, but again, doesn't really hurt armor. We have a small push along the right with the Salt Grand Ears, but there's enough infantry and MGs to hold the line. Again, Screaming Steel's not dumb. He's holding the victory point against mostly if, uh, all in forces, except for maybe this Panther. That could be an issue. Um, he'll need to quickly reposition all of his infantry. I'm uh, sorry, all of his armor. But all of his armor is, for the most part, the whiz bangs. So. 70 pounders uh, repositioned and healed up. So, good job on uh, Johnny for repositioning against all those, uh, you know, bombardments and strikes. Because it is quite annoying for all these Nebelwerfers to fire. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nebelwerfers. Again, we'll double check kills at the very end. Air supports hitting mid, but British forces are consistently holding. Again, this would be an area for one of the Nebelwerfers to fire instead of just a big barrage hitting nothing. Anti armor strike from the Stukas hit, uh, hit, pushing back the 76, but luckily the Grenadier does perish. Grenadier is going to try to decap the territory as fast as he possibly can, and a quick cap thanks to the breakthrough. Manages just to hold it. Whizbang, though, neutralizes mid. Great air goes down. Small armored push moving on up, but the 70 pounder is still alive, by the way. About to get its seventh, seventh kill. Boom, bada, bing, baby. Knocks out the Panzer IV. And remember, the more that red, aka uh, Dank, pushes on this side, the less he has to really fight against Pada. And again, Pada doesn't have a lot, but he at least has something, right? So Dank Boy is just going to be in a bit of a tough situation. Sherman will go down to the Panther, but that 70 pounder is still there with Grant support. And again, he's buttoned, bruised, and about to die. There he goes. He will die. Massive battle going on in mid. Hell of a job by those Grants. Again, Grants nothing to sneeze at with its firepower against the armor. 
Again, Axes just don't have their own sort of AT weapon to hold back this armor. And, or infantry to hold back the Rangers. With Brens, by the way, which is fucking hilarious. Uh, Sherman hitting on, up on the high ground to hit this Panther. Should be able to get the kill. Do we have Bazooka team in there? I think we do. do we have, oh, no. Grenade is just thrown. Because why not? Does that actually get the kill? No. I love the intention behind it, but no dice. And there. We got to, spectating is over. Uh, sorry. Uh, the replay is done. Love the fire barrage effect, uh, in effect. But yeah, they do hold on to it. All right. Double checking the overall kills of each side. Uh, let me go over to another position so we can see. Thank you, Johnny, for submitting this replay. Great job. Uh, great game. Uh, Screaming Steel gets top kills. Uh, M1s. It had to be the M1s. Though the grants from Johnny and that 70-pounder keep the damage high on his part. On the Axis side, uh, yeah, Dolph had some real issues right there. But, uh... <laughs> uh, nearly Sam just commented in chat. I went for this replay that fuck Johnny, I hate him. Yeah, uh, to be fair, you guys were really in a bad state. Uh, but, hey, Pada, Sam, you guys did pretty well, all things considered. Even if you didn't get the most kills. Johnny got the most vehicle kills. 18 of them. Damn. Uh, Rosen got top enemy kills from his, I'm assuming, BS amount of uh, spam. But we'll see that in a second. And actually, just... There actually is a tie here on damage. That's, I think, a first that I've ever seen. So, good job there. Uh, let's double check that graph. To see what, or the units killed, to see what were the big outliers. Yeah, M1 and the SF Commandos didn't really, uh, I mean, he re probably recruited, but still, not too shabby, all things considered. Uh, speaking for the SSF Commandos, that only lost one squad, so good thing there. Uh, nothing really in the kill department, all that, all that big, and nothing in the vehicle kills. Also, again, vehicle kills is of Commandos, so probably the MVP for um, Screaming Steel. Double check on the Vermach. Uh, his Falsham Pioneers did okay with 39 kills. Uh, double checking over in ve uh, vehicles. The Panzer IV, 45 kills, but again, lost quite a bit of those. Uh, double check on the Brits. A lot, lot of trucks. But the Grants, uh, thanks to Johnny, were the thing with 32 kills. Eight vehicles. Really the spearhead. And with the infantry section, not actually not too far off. 44 kills right there. So, really, like, again, this breakdown I do like, because, again, it highlights what the big killers were, to point out. And these Panthers, not, I mean, they killed a lot of vehicles, not a lot of infantry, but a lot of them perished from this. That was the big thing. You just couldn't keep them alive. Nearly Sam, uh, his Shermans did all die. Uh, not big in the kill department either way, and not really big in uh, this. But, again, he did his job. He, he, was, he was in the chopping block and uh, did the best he could with what he had. Borat, his support guns, 58 kills. Again, not too shabby. Um, I don't think there's really any vehicle kills or anything else to really speak of. Yeah, not too much. So, uh, keep going on. We double check here. Uh, Pada, I'm not seeing all that much. I guess the... His own M1s, right? A little bit, but... Kind of a mixed bag for him. A lot of vehicles, not a lot of kills overall. Just kind of holding his side, which hey, he's doing it. He's doing his part. This Vrybok player, oh god, Nebworfers, you produced eight of them. You lost a number of them. Only fifty-three for the amount of spam that I saw. Uh, yeah, 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 that's that's a lot of spam. Great ears did okay, but again, a lot of losses there. Just not a lot of breakthrough, honestly, for a guy going break. Uh, I believe he went breakthrough, but yeah, just a lot, a lot of firepower, but not a lot of actual breakthrough from him. So alas, but Hey, good game. Good things. All, all things considered. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. It's been Grayshaw17 and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot17, and before y'all go, let me give a special shout out to Patreon supporters, JoeyG240, Malam, Big Cooch, Afaria, Ace, Pyroshark, TonyB95, Epic Pleb, thank you all for your incredible support in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything I do. Thank you, and to the rest of you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.